Hello everybody, I'm Challenger Jackal and welcome back to part 1 of our brand new challenge series where we take on the popular fan game Sonic Road Blast 2 to see where it's possible to beat the game without collecting any rings. If you haven't checked out the previous adventure challenge series, I highly recommend you do so and the links will be in the description below. However, before we begin, if you love Sonic content or challenge videos in general and you want to see more content like this on the channel, do me a favour and smash the subscribe button, like the video and hit that naughty bell. You guys came out and smashed the initial goal. Thank you so much for your continuous support. And if you have any ideas for future challenge runs you'd like to see me tackle on the channel, slip them down below and I'll definitely see what I can do. Now as always, I'll quickly go over the rules of this challenge, although they're pretty self-explanatory at this point. First of all, if we collect a ring at any point, it counts as a fail and we have to restart the stage. Next, the run will begin in Green Flower Zone and is completed upon the defeat of Brack Robotnik. However, part 1 will wrap up upon the conclusion of Arid Canyon Zone. And finally, yes, this run will have glitches, kind of, as they were needed during the routing. Now, without any further ado, do, let's jump straight in. Just a quick side note, whilst I do understand it may be controversial for me to use what's essentially a mod character with Shadow, do know that this run would have been done with Tails if I didn't decide to go with the ultimate life form. In fact, this run would have been infinitely easier with Tails, but I just wanted to change the pace after already used him just recently for the Adventure No Ring Challenge series. Our journey begins in the rolling hills of Green Flower Zone, and yeah, this is essentially your typical Green Hill clone, found at the beginning of a ton of Sonic games. Nothing here is typically challenging, certainly under our stipulation, as this level is designed to get you accustomed to the game's mechanics and controls. Using one of Shadow's awesome traversal abilities to Chaos Snap, we can take a shortcut by warping up the waterfall. Aside from this though, there isn't really anything else to mention. Just take your time and avoid the crawlers, and Act 1 is beaten ringless fairly easily. For all intents and purposes, Act 1 is a freebie. Luckily for us, the game only gets more interesting from here, starting as soon as Act 2. Now don't get me wrong, the first section is pretty straightforward. The crawlers and rings are easily avoidable. Well, until we reach a row of red springs just after the first checkpoint. We need to hit the springs to reach the next section above. The only issue is hitting doors will bounce us into the rings. Now Tails can simply fly up there no problem. Shadow on the other hand just doesn't have enough vertical reach even with the Chaos Snap. Fortunately, if you hit the edge of the red spring, you have just enough time to slightly alter your trajectory, essentially weaving through the rings harmlessly. Even with this door, we're slapped into an almost identical scenario with a number of yellow springs. Only this time you can't actually hit them, otherwise we'll collect the rings along the bounce path. If you look to the left though, you'll see a cliff edge that we could potentially use to reach the top without the use of the springs. And sure enough, this cliff is reachable through the Chaos Snap, allowing us to reach the next checkpoint with ease. As tempting as it is, I highly recommend against rolling down this slope. Yeah, you can technically avoid the rings placed along it even whilst rolling. However, in SRB2, your movement is pretty much restricted if you sent airborne whilst rolling, potentially collecting the rings whilst midair. Instead, we just run down the slope, jumping down to the pathway below to reach the final section of the stage. Using Chaos Snap to avoid the use of the yellow springs to reach a familiar scenario with a row of red springs. Thankfully, there are more springs placed in this row, allowing us to simply bounce on the one in between the rings, completing Act 2 without collecting any rings. Now Act 3 is your typical classic Eggman boss affair, he takes 8 hits to kill with his desperation phase kicking in after the 4th hit. Now you may notice that our ring counter actually says we have 10. In the case of SRB2, this is your default start in boss encounters, as no rings are placed throughout the arena. After much deliberation, I decided to not count these rings as we start off with them. We didn't collect them in the gameplay and we have no other choice but to start with 10 already in our possession. Instead, I will only consider a boss encounter a fail if we collect a ring upon damage. We're allowed to take a hit but we cannot collect the rings if this occurs. With that said, this boss fight is thankfully pretty easy. Eggman will launch a laser attack at you in 3 intervals. In the first phase, there's slow switch Charles plays to simply avoid him and counter him. In the final phase, not only does Eggman speed up, he will also launch a trio of lasers at you in rapid succession. For this, I opted to just evade the lasers until he cools down and ambushing him at just the right moment. Moments. Regardless, 4 more hits later and Green Flower Zone is beatable without collecting any rings. Reaching the outer hills, we discover that Eggman has polluted this once natural wonder into the techno hill you see before you. Whilst sure, Act 1 of this stage can pose a ton of problems in a ringless run, all thanks to the numerous gimmicks of the stage, such as the pipes with the air we need to use to reach the higher pathway. Normally, this isn't a problem, however, the rings prevent us from doing so here. At first, I was thinking maybe we could try to weave out the way of the rings in a similar manner to the strategy in Green Flower Zone, but I was way overthinking this as Shadow can easily reach the next section on his own fire his Chaos Snap. Doing so again, we traverse the higher pathway to reach the inner workings of the factory, chaos snapping over the moving platforms as they were littered with rings. We are able to escape unharmed, reaching the final section of the stage. Like before, we need to use the steam escaping the pipes to propel ourselves up to the shaft in the wall. In order to avoid the rings, we just chaos snap up there, that is until we reach the final pipe. 
Placed on the last pipe is a spring. A moss shadow is capable of chaos snapping up to the shaft in the wall. He also possesses a home and attack activated in the same way. I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this. Shadow can reach the next section, but if you try to do so right in front of the spring, he will lock onto it collecting the rings along the bounce path. So instead, we need to jump closer to the shaft in the wall so Shadow can reach the final section uninterrupted by the spring. After this, we jump down the hole taking care to avoid the rings as we fall, clearing Act 1 of Techno Hill ringless. Act 2 actually takes place in the heart of the factory, with its main gimmick being the purple water. Now this was also in Act 1 by the way, but it doesn't play a major factor in the previous stage. How it works is that the higher position you land from, the deeper down you'll go. It's basically jelly. Using Shadow's Chaos Nap, we allow ourselves to fall from the ceiling, taking care to avoid the rings under the jelly to reach the next section. Taking full advantage of Shadow's great mobility, we reach the room with the conveyor belt, scaling them whilst avoiding the bandit coming our way. There's also these electrical panels that we need to jump across, as making contact with them would deal damage. Evading them is pretty simple though. Reaching an open room absolutely filled with jelly, you have a number of block platforms scattered throughout that you normally would need to use to traverse to the other side. However, I get a little trigger happy using Chaos Snap, failing the section spectacularly. Thank goodness for the home and attack. Nevertheless, we reach the next checkpoint and this is where things got rather hectic. Riding the platform down to the next section, we're barraged by a turret that we need to avoid for our speed. This took me far too many tries than I care to admit. It's all thanks to the awkward ring placement as well as needing to rush through. After a while, I discovered it was safer to actively take a wider path to avoid the initial rings. And once the turret enters its cooldown, intentionally slowing myself down avoiding the last three ring trails before the next checkpoint. Chaos snapping upon the higher conveyor belt, we dash through the corridors whilst being chased by these mini Death Star bandits to finally reach the final portion of the stage. Leaping onto the rim of the water tank, we're able to take a shortcut by spin dashing over to the row of the yellow springs reaching the final section. Below us, the floor consists of the electrical panels, meaning we have to take the rising platforms to the end of the stage. I had to be careful here and aim my jumps along the outer edge of the squares to avoid the rings placed in the centre. With this final obstacle cleared, we complete Act 2 without collecting any rings. Techno Hill's boss encounter is an awesome blend of chemical plants boss encounter, and ironically enough the secret base boss encounter from Sonic Advance of all games. The whole premise is simple. During its first phase, Eggman will basically circle around you spitting out the blue slime from the top of his Eggmobile. Once you hit him, he will circle in the opposite direction, meaning you can essentially intersect him straight away and cheese the first phase entirely. For his desperation phase, he maintains the blue gooey type, however his Eggmobile transforms into a pogo stick, making him a stationary target for the most part. I found it a lot easier to be hit by the goo in this phase, however you shouldn't have any trouble with his fight as we clear Techno Hill Zone ringless. As is the case with a lot of water levels in the classic Sonic series, Deep Sea revolves around slow methodical platforming sections rather than a stage that encourages you to build and maintain your speed, impeding you with the amount of traps, spikes and those annoying crab bandits that have the potential to snipe you from a distance. In saying that though, it's far less annoying than the likes of say Labyrinth Zone, and has quite a few fun set pieces especially when it pertains to the water slide. Right off the bat we're given two pathways going left and right. For the purpose of this run, I choose the pathway on the right as it's by far the quickest way to beat the stage. The less time we actually have to spend here, the better. As always, Shadow's godly air mobility through Chaos Snap was a massive boost in this level in particular. The ability to just have massive air time made me more comfortable with leaping over a lot of the spikes, even though I fell in the water and almost died because of it. Barely avoiding the crabs, we eventually make it to the first checkpoint of the stage, where we avoid the rings to ride the water slide. One thing to note is that you can actually jump whilst the slide pushes you forward, so in the case of Act 2 where rings are placed along the path of the slide, you should use that to your advantage. Nevertheless, we jump over to the other slide, only to be met with a path of springs that we would need to take to the next section of the stage. The intended pathway is beyond this cliffside that you would need to use the spring to leap across. Due to the rings this wasn't possible, and upon closer inspection the opening just appeared too high for Shadow to reach himself. Now Tails and possibly Knuckles with his walk would have no problems reaching it themselves, but for a time I was pretty much stumped. However it turns out my doctor might be right, a trip to Specsavers may be warranted as literally to the right of this area is a checkpoint. Now the checkpoint isn't important, but the path it's placed on very well is. This pathway extends up the wall, allowing us to simply run up and jump down clearing the cliffside with ease. How this took me 10 minutes to actually notice leaves me speechless. And of course, when it rains, it bloody pours, when I get exhorted by the crab bandit that I actually saw coming. I guess the checkpoint did matter after all. On the next attempt, we stay way clear of the crab, reaching the room with these rising pillars. The way forward is above the two pillars, now what makes this interesting is that they are pressure sensitive. They won't begin rising until you actually land on top of it, stopping once you reach the ceiling so you have to be quick if you don't want to be crushed. And whilst the jumps aren't terribly difficult, it can take a few tries if you aren't yet accustomed with SRB2's physics, making it possible to overshoot in it 
the spikes. Like Techno Hill, just aim for the outward patterns of the pillar to avoid the rings, and with that we can bypass the next section entirely by the waterfall with the Chaos Snap. Hitting the red spring set into the squared shaft in the wall, I decided to careen shadow to the left of this section so I could avoid the three massive loot formations of rings. Now you can actually go through the centre of them no problem, it's just that every time I tried I somehow managed to hit the rings. Nevertheless, we reached the final checkpoint underwater and from here it's a simple walk to the goal. You do need to take care and replenish your air from time to time so you don't drown. And also stay far away from the mines underwater. If you hit them, Shadow will bounce off them and his movement in the air will be restricted, oftentimes damaging you when they finally blow up. So instead, I simply walk by them, hitting the red switch to open the door and completing that one without collecting any rings. In a casual playthrough, I certainly have a far easier time with Act 2 than Act 1. However, in this challenge run, I was dreading this stage far more as it's simply a long stage. And as history has shown, the longer a stage is, the potential it has to go south very quickly. On the bright side, Act 2 has more water slides, so at least it has that going for it. As I mentioned before, the slides shouldn't give you a lot of trouble if you jump to avoid the rings. This takes us back under the water, forcing us to scale the road to the right to reach the surface again. With Tails, we can literally just swim back up very quickly. Shadow unfortunately has to take the long way around though, avoiding the spikes and reaching the next section of the stage. This next section, whilst easy enough, has a bunch of rings and ring container boxes that you can actually combo with. Off, which is really fun to do, but you have to resist that urge keeping you distance and jumping down the hole whilst avoiding the rings as we go back under the water. The room up ahead is just plain mental. Like before, we have a cluster of mines to avoid with a crab bandit in the centre. Eggman really wants us to die in this water prison. On this run, I was able to just run through the mines, being just fast enough to avoid the crab claw, but this setup is by no means consistent. We do get another checkpoint, however, meaning we thankfully never have to do that again. Reaching yet another large room, this time with the pressure sensitive pillars, what we're supposed to do is use the many pillars to platform across to the exit of this underwater section. However, Shadow can literally just go to the other side and then Chaos Snap from the floor up to the exit. Tails has an even easier time as he can just swim through here unscathed as well. Avoiding the crab, he used the Chaos Snap to reach the higher platforms, collecting a ring in the process. Whilst this isn't too difficult, the ring placement is incredibly awkward, forming a ring around the outer edge of the platforms, forcing us to jump in and out of the centre with each jump. Instead, I opt to Chaos Snap once into the air, and then again forward so we can bypass it completely, as trying to traverse that section ringless was honestly more of a hassle than it was worth. Ahead, there is this wall with a tiny gap that we have to jump through. Only spikes are protruding from both the bottom and top half of said wall, so we have to be perfect with our jump, something I'm clearly not good at as we die. On the next attempt, we do clear it, allowing us to reach the next checkpoint, and we even found an air shield for our trouble. It's located so late in the stage, so it doesn't really matter too much. However, the extra hit does wonders for your confidence. Hitting the outer spring so we can avoid the ring trail, we finally reach the last section of the stage filled with the water slides. This is kind of like a puzzle area, as if you go down the wrong slide, you'll reach a dead end with the crab magnets, so you have to keep your eyes open and just follow the rings. When we reach the slide where the road splits, we take the left path, jumping over the slide furthest away to finally reach the goal that's a spring away. Pause buffering made the water slide way less dangerous to traverse, but with that, Act 2 is cleared ringless. Act 3 compared to the previous two acts is barely worth mentioning at all. As before, Eggman takes 8 hits to kill split into two phases. His first phase, he will remain under the water for a period of time, before popping up and unleashing an electrical ring that traverses across the entire length of the arena. It is pretty easy to avoid though just by jumping over it. You do have to be careful as he will shoot a homing missile directly after this, but if you can also avoid that, he's vulnerable to damage. The second phase continues this attack point only much faster and triple the trouble. Literally. This time, as he pops up, so will 2D Decoys. Now whilst this is a cool idea, it would have been more interesting if the real Eggman didn't have smoke coming off of him. Thanks to the smoke, figuring out who's hit is remarkably simple and with that we move on to the next stage of this run, Castle Eggman Zone. Now the premise of Castle Eggman Zone is such a Mario inspired idea, when was the last time Eggman even had a castle? But to Sonic Team Jr's credit, they actually pulled it off and made it their own. Act 1 takes place in the moor area of the castle before traversing the inside for Act 2. This stage is home to some of the most annoying and dangerous bandits in the game, from those green arseholes that will snipe you from a distance with their projectiles and actively run away from you if you try to kill them, to the egg knights that take two hits to kill and have a habit of rugby tackling you in the same vein as Beta Mark 2. Combined with the amount of hazards and tight platforming sections and you have one of the most nerve wracking stages in this ringless challenge. Avoiding the egg knights and spike balls we inevitably fall into the mud trying to hit the spring, forcing the restart. Actually hitting the springs this time we reach the first set piece of this stage, the 
these swing thingies. No, they work by entering one of the five holes, and if you time your jump correctly, the amount of vertical air you can get is actually insane. Instead of entering the holes on either side, I stupidly entered the middle, forcing us to launch Shadow straight up, so we can avoid the mid-air rings. Thankfully, Chaos Snap has enough forward momentum so we can reach the higher pathway, but this is something that I needed to make note of in the future. Hitting the checkpoint, I made use of Chaos Snap again to reach the window still furthest away from us, bypassing the fort section completely. We then entered the stronghold, making sure to evade the swinging spike. The fact that Shadow's Chaos Snap can actually phase through hazards is so broken, I swear. Remember when I said I would make note about the swings for the next time? I lied. Chaos Snap once again saves us, but it was touch and go for a moment. Regardless, we reached the next checkpoint, having to run across these wooden planks with rotating spike balls, and it's as scary as it looks. Rather than hitting the spring, I decided to spin dash jump across instead, approaching the next spring after a few precise jumps. I tried something slickier by landing on top of the castle and then trying to spin dash jump over to the red springs, but it failed spectacularly. So the next time, I just took the intended route, using the springs to aim shadow at the red springs in between the ring trails to finally reach the final section by this campfire. This entire section reminds me of Dark Souls for some reason. The music is absent so it gives off an eerie vibe to it. What we have to do is use the springs to traverse the castle walls, reaching the bridge that leads us to the goal post. For some of the springs though, we're unable to do so as we'd be pushed into the path of rings. Thankfully, Shadow does have enough reach to Chaos Snap up the first wall, so we do so upon collecting the windshield for extra security. The next spring is safe to touch if you hit it from an angle, which allows us to use the final cluster of springs to finally reach the last part of the stage. Now, the goal is on the other side of this bridge, and once the castle gates collapse, the bridge will soon follow, forcing you to dash across avoiding the many spikes, springs and bandits along the way. Now, with Tails and Shadow, you can get a head start as the ceiling above you will integrate before the gate, allowing us to fly our Chaos Snap out of there making this slightly easier. My only advice for you is to be comfortable with jumping early. Whilst it sounds counterintuitive, ideally you want to land before the moving spikes, so you can then leap across to the next section of the bridge. You don't want to Chaos Snap here either, as a homing attack can really screw you over, but with that we complete Act 1 without collecting any rings. Act 2 is actually set inside the castle, and this place is absolutely massive, so much so that I got lost here on my very first playthrough of the game. As you can probably imagine all the openness comes at our expense, as Act 2 is one of the hardest stages in this run to actually beat Ringless, taking the difficult aspects of Act 1 and dialing them up entirely. Falling through the collapsing floor, we reach the circular corridor we need to ride the platforms over to the next section. Instead, I decided to use it as a jump pad so we didn't have to waste our time slowly riding over. Evading the godly amount of spike balls, avoiding a bunch of hazards from above us thankfully the easier route to take. We did get screwed over here though, attempting to jump over the enemies with the shields. Since Shadow was too close, he locked onto them instead, leaving him at the mercy of the charging Egg Knight that loved to capitalise on the situation. So on the next attempt, I waited for the Egg Knight to get out of the way before proceeding, reaching the next checkpoint in the courtyard. It turns out Eggman is generous enough to give us multiple death traps to choose from. I decided to take the upper left path as it's the one I'm the most familiar with, and I also believe it's the fastest. Anyway, the Egg Knight and Spikes are very easy to avoid. I allowing us to hit the next checkpoint and use the springs to soar across the courtyard to the wooden staircase with the rotating spike balls. The spikes will squeeze past the gaps in the staircase, which makes it awkward to climb when avoiding the rings. My only advice is to take your time and you'll reach the top relatively quickly, squeezing through the small gap in the spikes. We have to use yet another spring to propel Shadow over to the checkpoint on the other side of this gap. Instead of jumping over the fidget spinner of doom, I instead chaos snap into it resulting in a game over. I swear I'd usually don't mess this up, especially in such a tragic manner like that, but it was easily clearable in the next attempt. Spin dash jumping over the second fidget spinner of spikes because I wasn't going to try and platform across using the intended method. It's here where I initially hit a brick wall in the routing. You see, to reach the last section of the stage, we need to enter through this wall by the springs. As you can see, the springs aren't an option and Shadow just doesn't have enough height with his chaos snap. Tails and perhaps Knuckles can reach his normal problem but Shadow not so much. I was going to switch the tails from this point but then I tried standing on the fence and sure enough it had collision, giving us just the height we needed to reach the inside of the castle and progress to the final section. The goal is at the peak of this circular room, forcing us to use the swings to reach the rotating platforms avoiding the spikes in the process. Even the hallway to the side isn't as safe as Egg Knight's encasing stone will activate the moment you approach them. In order to reach the final swing we are forced to act quickly, Chaos snapping the moment we reach the platforms above and using the final swing to clear the stage without collecting any rings. My goodness, that dragged on. Now, the boss for this zone is actually rather unique. Taking place in a dual arena, Eggman resides in the cage of this medieval-like contraption. We can't hit him whilst he's protected by the cage as we take damage upon making contact. So what's the trick to this? Well, around the arena there are three coloured switches. As the battle draws on, they will rise and by hitting them, this will raise the cage, allowing you to hit Eggman. At first, only one of them needs to be pressed to raise the cage. However, the more hits you get, the faster the spikes will spin and you'll be required to hit all three of the buttons to hit the Mad Scientist. Now this isn't too hard as long as you follow the 
rotation of the spikes. If you try to go counterclockwise, it's very easy to take a hit. After five hits, however, Eggman will abandon the cage completely and take flight, forcing us to reach the stands of the arena via the springs. What's really cool is that the egg robots here aren't just for show. If you get too close to them, they will actually push you into the phones below, so you have to be careful. From here, you just have to time your jump so you don't hit the spinning spikes, and after three hits, we clear Castle Eggman without collecting any rings. Irish Canyon Zone is a really unique stage, utilising a Wild Western theme to great effect. From minecarts, tumbleweeds, and even Fang the Sniper? But before we get too ahead of ourselves, Act 1 was pretty short, especially when compared to Castle Eggman, was way harder than I thought going in. Right off the bat, there's a shortcut we can take by using the whirlwind to the left and leaping across the right to skip a good portion of the beginning section of the stage. Well, at least usually. I kind of forgot about the rings within the whirlwind, so I tried to pull it off just by spin dashing normally, and hoping Chaos Snap had enough range to grab a hold of the zip line. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, it does not. I'm convinced you can reach it without the whirlwind with Shadow, but I just couldn't. As Tails, you could pretty much fly over this section harmlessly. As for us, though, we chaos snap around the intended pathway as the cactus can and will damage you if you get too close. Now, the amount of airtime you can actually get with Shadow is incredible, to the point where we seamlessly reach the first checkpoint using the red springs to escape the cave and finding a windshield for good measure. After almost losing our shield to the cactus, we need to collapse these wooden planks or the stone will tip over, providing a ramp for us to cross the gap. If you aren't fast enough, you can actually die here from the stone crushing you, or by the turtle bandit that has no business moving as fast as it does here. Once we do manage to cross the gap, we reach an almost identical scenario, only this time with a pile of TNT, which ends up being way more manageable. The TNT doesn't move, so you can just off to the side whilst it explodes, before collapsing the stone to proceed forward. It's after the safe line where this stage becomes impossible as Shadow. The way forward is high above and a cliff edge reachable by the red spring. The ring trail makes it impossible to take the spring, and because of the angle of the spring I couldn't just walk into the side of it as it still propelled me forward. The cliff is sadly just too high for Shadow to reach in any other way, so I had no other choice but to switch the tails for the remainder of the stage, allowing us to fly up to the next section without a problem. I don't consider this as a fail as SRB2 is structured more like a classic Sonic game. It's not like I'm cheating to add Tales to Sonic Story and Adventure for example, so in the context of this run I believe it's fair game. Nothing else in this stage posed any problems for Tales if I'm being honest. We can completely skip a ramp by spin dash jumping from this stone slab balancing on top of a rock formation, simply flying over to the final section. With any other character we would have to take the long way around via the zip lines, jumping off them to dodge the rings along their path. And yes I checked, this section is actually possible to beat Ringless with Shadow. Once we reach the pathway after the third zip line we can spin dash jump across to the final pathway, riding the last few zip lines to beat Act 1 ringless. Tails has his own route, we could just fly to the goal, not even needing to bother with the zip lines. So technically, Act 1 is beatable ringless, I just couldn't do so with Shadow, unfortunately. Act 2 by far has the best music in the game, but that doesn't save this stage from being absolute bollocks to beat ringless, and it all stems from the bloody minecart sections. I'm getting too ahead of myself. Right away, we reach this ramp we need to climb so we can take the upper path. Usually, you would hit the springs, but the rings that extend up the ramp make it awkward, especially when moving at high speeds. Instead, I opt to charge a spin dash at the side, which has just enough speed to reach the platforms above. Dashing over to the windshield, we try our best to avoid the purple mist of the Bandix. If this mist makes contact with you, it slows you down to a crawl, making it very easy to fall off. They just break the pace and I hate them so much. Thankfully, the first checkpoint is a mere few jumps away, reaching safety with a well-timed chaos snap. Because Shadow is a god in the air, we can simply use the height of this stone slab to jump across the gap to the next checkpoint, and this is where it all began to unravel. This is the first of two minecart sections and they both suck hard in this challenge. We're placed along a linear trap bombarded with rings and other hazards like the explosives. We cannot stop or get off at any point until the end. And if we derail at any point you will die and believe me whilst trying to avoid the rings, this can happen a lot. Now I believe there's a way to actually skip the first minecart by taking the whirlwind from the left of the checkpoint, but I died using this route as I wasn't familiar with it. Now it is possible to get through this first section ringless, it's just bloody hard to do. As soon as you pass through the set of wooden doors, jump. If you don't, you'll run right into the rings and be forced to restart. If you do this right, congratulations, you have to do it all over again and this time it's even harder. You see whilst the minecart is automated, you won't just turn around corners if you jump, rather you derail and lose a life, so why rings will place a literal inch behind the corner is just plain insanity. This jump is just plain evil, if you jump too early you'll collect the rings, jump too late and you'll careen off the edge of the corner. Even if you do it right there are times where you land back on the rail in an awkward angle, so the moment you try and switch to a different rail you'll immediately derail and die. I did find a consistent setup for this strategy though, as soon as you land from jumping over the TNT barrel you need to jump again immediately and you'll land just before the corner keeping you on the rail. All you have to do from this point is avoid the TNTs and we finally reach the next checkpoint. 
Remember when I said this was one of the two minecart sections? Well, at the very end of Act 2, we are forced back onto yet another minecart trail, and this one is sadly impossible to beat ringless. No matter what you do, it's inevitable that you'll pick up rings, whether it be from the steep uphill littered with rings, or the final section where rings are placed around a literal bend making it impossible to jump over them. Now to top all of that off, there's no other pathways to reach the goal, you have to go through this section. The only way to beat Act 2 ringless is if you're able to skip the section entirely, which is impossible to do in single player. Yeah, you heard me right, whilst it's impossible in single player, there is a viable strategy in co-op. The wooden doors that we pass on the minecarts will only open one way, you can't run into them and make them budge, you must be on the minecart itself. You do see where I'm going with this right? In multiplayer, as long as one of the characters are riding the carts, it will open the doors. Now I did this by myself in split screen. The tails on the bottom screen is being controlled via the number pad, whilst the top tails I'm using my controller. By placing player 1 directly in front of the doors, we can use a well-timed spin dash to click through the collision of the door as player 2 opens it in the minecart. Now this did take me a few tries, but once we were successful, we used tails to fly over to the goal, completing act 2 without collecting any rings. Whilst this is technically impossible to do in single player, I still think it should count as it's technically possible to beat a stage with only one person, as I was controlling both of the characters. Let me know what you think down below, should this glitch count? Now the moment you've all been waiting for. The boss for Irish Canyon isn't Eggman this time around but Fang the Sniper from Triple Trouble, and Sonic the Fighters which is by far the more interesting game. But yeah, that's all I've got to have to say about this fight, to be honest it sucks. Okay, that's a bit harsh, however, all this boils down to is a waiting game. The first phase begins on the inside of this cargo train. Fang has two attacks that he will unleash after he starts bouncing around the arena. A simple bomb that will just blow you away if it connects. And three pellets of his gun that will keep you mobile in the air, and they're just really annoying if they hit you. Fang is vulnerable after using the attacks as he starts snickering, meaning we just have to wait until he finally decides to attack you, which can take as long as 10 seconds of just waiting around. Well, with everybody except Shadow. Thanks to the homing attack, Shadow can simply attack Fang mid bounce taking out a large chunk of the tedious waiting. For his second phase, Fang pulls a madness destroying the walls of the train with his bombs exposed on the outside. Whilst his attack patterns remain identical, this time with each bounce, Fang will also drop a bomb, making it far too risky to simply home an attack as the explosion will push him off the train, forcing a reset. We had to play this as initially intended, and after three more hits, Fang goes down, concluding Arid Canyon ringless. Um. With all of that said, I think it's time to end part 1 on a high note. Whilst I originally intended this challenge to be a single episode, it developed into a far larger undertaking than I initially thought going in, meaning I just need a little bit more time to truly put this ringless challenge to bed. So with that said, join us next week when we take on the second half of SRB2 to see where it's possible to beat the game without collecting any rings in the thrilling conclusion. Before this video concludes, I just want to take the time to thank each and every one of you who have took the time to support this channel thus far. Thanks to you guys, we recently hit 500 yeah. subscribers. That is insane, and I'm excited to see where we can take this channel in the future. For now though, I've taken up enough of your time, so as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye for now.